Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how to make these. It's a three step process, but it's well worth it. So, okay, I've sprayed my moulds. These are nine centimetre square moulds. Um, I've sprayed them with a light spray of alcohol. Then I made up 100 grams, which is 52A, 48B. Then I decanted 20 grams and added four drops of fuchsia. Then I decanted 20 grams of clear one, 20 grams of mica, t mica one, which was purple orchid. And again, a good heap spoon, so it goes up the handle slightly. And 20 grams of mica two, which was black. It's more like a steel gray than a pure black. I have got a pure black. And then 20 grams of clear two. Okay, right, here we go. So we're going to pour the pigment round the edge and we're going to take our time because we don't want fat squircles. Sorry if I'm blocking you at this stage. Now I'm only putting a hundred uh, 50 in each because I don't want them to be domed because we're putting them into another mould. But these moulds do on average take 60 grams but I want them to be slightly under. Right, once you've got your outer ring down, just go over it again. Make sure you go on top of what you've already poured. Try and make it as square as possible as you, if you can. So I'm just going to go on top of what I've poured. And I'm literally going to save the scrapings. I'll show you what we do with that in a minute. Okay, so that's our first one down. Now we're going with our first clear and we're going next to what we've just poured. Again, make sure it's touching the pigment. And you can, this is the stage where you can try and square it up a bit better. Make sure you've got corners. So again, I'm going next to the pigment, make sure it's touching. And I'm just pushing that tint backwards. And what this clear is doing is giving us a barrier between the tint and the mica. Because sometimes the tint can muddy the mica and the cracks can become really muddy so once you've got your ring down you just go oh, put more in this one just go on top of what you've already poured on top of your clear get every last little drop out you can
There we go. So that's our pigment and our first clear ring down. Just going to give a quick debubble. My fan's going to blow it off. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go in with our first mic. I must explain, um, I use, <laughs> people have asked me about my sticks. These are, if you want to look, find them on Amazon, plastic tongue depressors. And the reason I've got a red mark at one end is because it's slightly, I've overused it and it's got a dip in it. And when I'm stirring, it tends to miss little bits of mica. So I make sure that I stir with the round end rather than the end with the dip. So... That's what I use, is plastic tongue depressor, and that's the only reason I've got a mark on it. Okay, so this is our first mica, and we're going to puddle pour. And we have to make sure that the mica touches the clear that we've put down. So straight in the middle. And don't forget we're splitting these between two. Again, in the middle, and it will push that clear, and it will touch that clear. Make sure your squircles are the same size. Give your cups a really good scrape out because we want every last little bit. Oh, I've got to knock that over. Let's go this way. Okay, so that's our first mica in. No, nope, that's not going to come off. Wipe your sticks as you go so you don't get in a big sticky mess. And we'll give that a quick debubble. Because mica likes to hold micro bubbles. Right, now we're going to go in with our mica 2, which was black, and again we're going to puddle pour. Straight in the middle. Try and get your squircles the same size. And the reason I've said squircle is because they start off as circles and they end up as squares. So. Here we go. Okay, so that's our mitres in. Quick debubble. And the reason I debubble between each stage of mica is because as we're putting the mica in, it will push the bubbles underneath. 
and sometimes they don't rise. So it's worth just spending a few minutes giving it a quick debubble to help them out. Okay, and now we're going to go in with our clear, our clear two. And again, we're going to puddle pull right in the middle. A little bit of height on this one to push it out. Okay, and then the bit that we saved earlier, the, literally the scrapings, I'm just going to add of the pigment right in the middle, a little tiny bit, because we won't have much left. And what that will do is it will make our middle coloured. So literally just drop it right in the middle because we don't want it to move ideally I'm trying to get every last little drop off out oh, sorry That's it. Okay. Go in for a lusty bubble. This time give it a really good gently going over with your flame. I would never use a torch on these moulds. They are so flimsy. And if you see any bubbles in the corners, which I have one, get your small tool and just gently bring it to the surface. So it's worth checking your corners. Just gently bring those bubbles to the surface. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you. I'm trying to see if I've got bubbles. Because bubbles like to find corners. I've got one there, which is in the mica slightly. So I'm just going to gently pull that bubble up. There. Okay. So I will cover these and leave them to set overnight. And then I shall show you stage two. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Right, this is stage one complete. So I shall demold this for you before we move on to stage two. Oh, brilliant. A little bit of a dead spot, but I'm not too worried about that. Look at those cracks, though. Aren't they beautiful? So delicate. And they go all the way into the sides. So, right. Okay, we shall move on to stage two now. Right, we're back. Okay, so these have been demoulded. They're totally set. Now we're going to move on to the next stage. So, I've made up... 220 grams, which is 115 of A and 105 of B. Then I decanted 40 grams of clear. And I've sprayed my moulds with a light spray of alcohol. And with my clear, I'm going to pour right in the middle. Equal amounts. Okay. 
don't want it to spread out too much and I'm also going to pour in the middle of our insert and I am going to spread this out slightly because the idea is we want them to make contact but have a slight barrier and no bubbles so I'm just going to pull it to the edge and if you do it over your mould that way you make sure any grips will go straight into your mould Make sure you've got no fish eyes. And the whole thing's covered. Okay. If you move it in the light, you can see if you've got any fish eyes in there. And fish eyes, I mean divots, where it's not quite touched. Okie dokie, so that one is covered. So just gently, where you've put your clear, press it down, give it a little bit of a wiggle, and then give it a really good press. And that way, it won't be on your mould, and you'll have a barrier of clear, so you can see the pattern. Also, it will help you center it. Okay, so now I'll do the same with this one. Again, I'll just pour it in the middle. It's also worth giving these um, a quick wipe down with the alcohol, just to make sure there's no grease on them and the resin will lie quite flat. I'm going to leave my cup there so that I can pour the rest in the middle. Again, just going to gently pull it to the edge. And the reason that I'm putting clear on is because we want to see the pattern that we've made. We want it to be quite defined. It's a little bit tricky this bit, but it's quite simple. So just gently pull it to the edge, make sure it's all covered. No bubblies. Okay. Just want to rest my stick on that one for the moment. And then again, just turn it over. And then give it a good press and a good wiggle and a jiggle. So if there are any air bubbles, which there shouldn't be, they've come out to the side. And with this last little bit of clear, I'm just going to fill in around the edge. So there's a nice, tiny, clear barrier. I'm just going to push, push it to the edges, make sure it's touching everywhere. Okay. Right, again, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a, a good push down. 
and a bit of a jiggle to make sure that it's got no bubbles underneath. And square them up. And then I'm just going to help these bubbles come up that did come out. I'm just going to go in with my lighter, give it a quick going over around the edge. There. So we've got a barrier clear which are holding them in place. Now, just move these up slightly so you can see a bit better. Now with the rest, so this is now, if I took 40 out, 180, I, add, I did add to this, um, it was half, it was half a spoon of the Midnight Blue Mica Powder and again half a spoon of my Holographic Pink Glitter, so it is actually transparent. And it's the same mica powder that we used in the um, dragon scales. And I want it to be transparent because I want the main feature to be the dragon scales, but I also want it to be framed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour in the middle of the dragon scale. And I'm just going to let it find its way. And with that barrier of clear, it shouldn't go underneath because we've got really nice contact. So once that's all covered, I should then do this one. So I've made it very translucent. for the moment and we're at the mic the clear and the the uh, mica powder haven't quite mixed you can just mix it with a stick just give it a nice that's also another reason that I made the uh, mica powder quite translucent oops Give it a nice mix. Make sure all that clear is mixed in nicely. I mean, I probably could have done less clear actually, so maybe only 20 grams of clear. Just to make sure you've got contact. Yeah, I think 20 grams will probably be better. That way you probably won't have much of the clear coming up. Okay, I'm just going to check my levels. Okay. Because what you need to do is you need to dome it ever so slightly so that the outline of the um, square we've put in can't be seen. 
So I'm just going to go into this one again. Tiny bit left. I don't want to flood them, but I want them to be nice and full. And I've got that left, so barely anything. Okay, check my levels again. That's it, they're nicely domed. Um, again, if you fear there's too much clear around the edge, just gently mix it in, and that's it. So again, my colour for the out the back, what, what would it be? The uh, outline was um, resin for decon, decon, decor. Sorry, resin for decor, um, midnight blue, mica powder literally half a spoon so half a spoon and half a spoon of pink glitter just to give it a little bit of sparkle and pick the pink out of the uh, square we've put in so i shall cover these and leave these to set overnight and i shall see you in the demolding well they're all nice and uh, set so it's time to demold I do hope this has worked. Okay, here we go. Oh wow! Oh, the the edges look like a, a galaxy in them. Oh, that's come up really well. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> so cool. And because we put the clear down, there's uh, none of the colour has leached into the clear. Well, there we go. I am so pleased with them. So I'll do this again with another colour. Definite thumbs up from me. I really enjoyed doing that and I really like the end result. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.